Good morning, everybody. My name is Phil, and joining me for a really great conversation is Nate Heffron. He's the city manager of Nagani. Nate, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, before we jump into RRC and get into the the details of, of that, let, let's maybe do a quick 101 of Nagani. Tell me a little bit about Nagani as a community. Sure. So Nagani is a small mining town in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, founded around 1844, and we're here primarily due to the mining industry. Iron ore was discovered around then, and then this community popped up, and many other communities in Marquette County also popped up due to the iron ore industry. So flash forward probably, I don't know, 100 years or so or more, and the mining industry has kind of decreased in size, hasn't disappeared completely. I mean, it is still fairly healthy for the markets that are, there are out there today, uh, but it's significantly smaller in scope and size than it had been in years past. So here we're dealing in Nagani with all the same things that small towns deal with, lack of funding, kind of a lack of planning to some degree, lack of investment in public infrastructure. So all those things can definitely affect a community. And where we are today is in a much better place. And I believe that's due to the process that was laid out through the MEDC's RRC program. It, it sounds like... The way that you describe Nagani sounds like so so many of our, our communities, not just in Michigan, but really across the country. It, 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 economy is changing, struggling with with resources and capacity, and it, it really could be the story of so many different communities. And I, lo- I love that you give credit to Nagani's progress at least partially to going through this RSC program. Before actually entering the program, what what was it about RRC that said, hey, this this could be a giant help for us? Well, I think the biggest thing that stuck out for me was some of the technical assistance that could be provided during the process and after the process. And having the ability to have your community shopped around by the state of Michigan internally and externally potentially to developers uh, was very attractive. The practices or the best practices they suggest to get to are all things that communities really should be doing anyways to be able to listen to the community, progress their community, or to maintain their communities. And really, in order to seriously attract developers, the system that's set out in the RRC process will do that for you, but you have to take the time to make that investment you have to be serious about wanting to have development in your community. And then after all is said and done, it's not just a, a, a magic wand that's waved. You still got hard work to do in uh, getting developers to actually develop in your communities. Mm. I, what you're saying really supports something that we talked about in a previous episode with the city manager from Sturgis, Jeff Coney, and in that there, there's so much like foundational system framework of a community kind of help, but almost equally important is this idea of marketing that, that you, after going through this process, inherently become more attractive to the people who are, who, who can do this, this redevelopment that, that the community so desperately needs because they might have worked with an RSC community previously or they can see zoning and ordinances that are streamlined and modernized and make, make sense or technical assistance that has kind of gotten the ball rolling on, on site, site plans and, and things like that. Talk to me about, about the process itself. So as you say, hey, RRC, this, this is what we need here in Nagani. Then what happens? Kind of walk me through how you go from zero to being a redevelopment ready community. Yeah, sure. So when I first got here in 2018, we were kind of in the process to some degree, and I kind of reviewed the checklist they give you to kind of do your self-examination on where you're at. So I'm going through the list, I'm checking off everything, thinking, you know, yeah, we're doing good, we're sitting good here. And I I remember going to a a meeting, I, I believe it's like the introductory meeting you have to go to for RRC and it was put on by our uh, MEDC in Main Street, Michigan. 
And I remember standing up in front of everybody saying, we're going to be certified in one year. Well, I, I was definitely way off base because we didn't become certified until last year. And it's a process and it's it's not just a sprint. I mean, it, you know, you really got to get into the weeds. You really want to make sure you're doing it right. You want to make sure you're prepared for when you're going to bring people to your community to show that you're serious about having development. And it's not just about development, it's about making a community that your residents want to have. So aligning things in your master plan, your downtown plan, and other planning documents is extremely important. So really, I see it as a planning tool that communities can utilize. And the best part about it is the MEDC is not saying you have to do X or do Y. They're kind of leaving you to do some of the stuff to get to the point where you need to be to become certified. So they're not forcing you to do anything. But these are proven practices that communities across Michigan and other states have done. So if someone else is making it work there, the likelihood, because it's been proven to work in other areas, will work in your community too. Yes, I, I I love everything that you're saying there because sometimes in our, in our communities we we think that we have we have issues that nobody else has. We we're, we're an outlier. We're very individual, and there there's no way that that somebody can come in and and really help. It. We we have to do it ourselves. But I th- I think to your point is well, wouldn't it be amazing? If you had a team of people who could come in and help you with all of the problems that almost all of our communities have and they've been able to solve and they've been able to help and they've been able to expedite that learning curve and really increase your capacity, wouldn't that be amazing? And it sounds like that's one of the big benefits of RSC for Nagani is that you did have have that kind of assistance to say, hey, we, let's, let's solve these problems uh, together. Absolutely. I mean, the technical assistance went a long ways. You also have to put some skin in the game yourselves, which is perfectly fine. But, you know, kudos to those communities that have the large cash flows and can get things done themselves. But for those that need that extra assistance, lack capacity with funding or staff members that, that lack of knowledge to be able to hire, the MEDC is there to help you and provide that assistance, maybe not necessarily directly with just their staff members, but through partnerships locally and within the state of Michigan, they will find you the assistance to get you where you need to be to check those boxes off during the RRC process. Very cool. So talk to me about a, a little bit about the fruits of fruits of your, your labor. What kinds of things are you, are you guys working on in, in Nagani? So as I was talking before, we're working on a downtown redevelopment project as a streetscape project. We received an $885,000 grant from MEDC under the RAP grant process. And I, I do tell people this. I say if we wouldn't have been engaged in the RRC, showing progress, building a positive relationship with MEDC, and, you know, more or less trying to get ourselves to the position that's going to help ourselves, I don't think we would have received that grant. And this grant's going to be transformational for generations in downtown Nagani. And another thing I say, too, to people is, you know, anybody can become RRC certified as a community, and that's all to help you. But the the reason, you know, the other reason I looked into it was because the downtown is like the heart of your community. That's where people go to see what you have for offerings, for businesses, for entertainment, or, or other purposes. And then if someone's going to move to your community, they're maybe going to look at the neighborhood they're going to live in. But they're not going to drive down every single street in your town to figure out, well, what is this community about? Well, your downtown is what you're about. And if you don't have a healthy heart, then I would say the rest of your community is probably failing as well. So we saw that in our community. Nagani is a unique place. It has that mining town feel, you know, the, the early 1800s, early 1900s feel. It's historic, and we want to make sure we preserve that because we want to be Nagani. We don't want to just be every town a USA out there. And through the RRC process, that helped us identify ways that we could protect that core 
heart of ours of downtown Nagani and that just spreads out across the neighborhoods. We have all these homes being sold, record prices. I mean, that's happening across the country, but before they weren't necessarily as attracted, attractive, excuse me. And then we have a lot of businesses moving downtown too. And that's attributed to RRC and also the change in philosophy of how the city has conducted business. And I always jokingly say, but this is quite serious, our goal is to always say yes unless it's illegal. So we'll try to find a way to help you do business in Nagani if we can. And we will get out of your way, follow the laws, follow the regulations we have. But we're here to help you and we're help, here to help you become a business in our community. I, I want to focus on a couple of things that you said. First about the identity. Sometimes you, you hear reluctance from communities to reach out and, and, and go through the RSC process or the Michigan Main Street and become part of Michigan Main Street uh, program um, because they don't, they don't want to lose their identity and they, they have this idea that, that these, the toolkit and the program are going to come in and cookie cutter your community and then walk away and now you are every town USA and that's 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 not the case it's 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 really enabling your community to become the best version of itself and i think that that's really been one of the things that that i've learned most um, about the effect that that RSC and Michigan Main Street can have in a community is they're not they're not trying to make you into something that you're not they're trying to create this best version of your community so that you can be Nagani only you can say yes to everything and you now you're attractive because you're RRC and developers love that I also loved you talking about how RRC was really it, it, it was that door opening to getting this transformative rap grant and because it it says it communicates to the state that you, you've done your due diligence, that you've got your your house in order, that if you get eight hundred thousand dollars, nine hundred thousand dollars, you're you're going to be able to use that really effectively, and that can mean the difference. I mean, you you said this is going to be transformative for generations to come, and being being an RSC community, man, they just made that happen. That's amazing. Yeah, it's extremely awesome. I mean. And it doesn't just stop with MEDC because you have to build relationships with all kinds of folks. Your state legislature, different department heads throughout the state that have grant holdings and looking at what their goals are and how those can benefit your community. Developers, people that own businesses downtown. So all those things work hand in hand. And it's, it's the whole thing about changing the philosophy of how you do business. One other thing that we just recently had happen for us talking about building relationships is our state legislator was able to get us a three million dollar earmark in the budget and we have a theater project we're trying to restore a historic building downtown Nagani that actually suffered a catastrophic roof failure due to an overload of water it was actually a functioning theater live theater and that happened. And so now we have this historic building in downtown Nagani that cannot be occupied, but now it can be saved due to funding mechanisms that have been offered by the state. And in creating those relationships with people that could see the need in the community and working hard to be able to advocate on uh, behalf of your community. Or the other option was we just not become certified through the RRC process, not change our ways, and watch our town crumble before our feet and having to go in and use public dollars to take buildings out because they're unsafe for the public downtown. So I'm glad that we prescribe to the methodologies that we've done so far. They've worked out very well for us and we will continue to use those to our advantage to make this one of the best communities in the Upper Peninsula and Michigan. What you're saying reminds me of a, like a quote I saw this morning that that change requires change, and and this idea of 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 Nagani changing and saying we we can do this better. Here here's a toolkit that is going to enable us to do this better, and we need to do this better. And now you have this this opportunity to 
save this historical theater, this place of this identity, like we were talking about about earlier. Even if you never step foot in that theater after it's amazing and beautiful and functioning again, even if you never step foot in that theater, in, within the community, that's a source of pride and it's a sign of momentum and progress and an, an embracing of the community that is, is so important to keep that, that change and that growth and that pride and that progress going into the future because, I mean, demolishing this historical theater because we well we just couldn't do anything with it and now every time you drive by it it's a vacant empty parcel of land and that could be vacant empty parcel of land for the next decade i mean that the wind of the sails of the community just kind of go ah oh. but instead this is this is something the community can rally around and say look at what our community has accomplished absolutely i mean you hit the nail right on the head and, you know, the other thing I would say about RRC, <clears throat> it gets you thinking about other things that are not requirements and you start going, well, should we start focusing on this or start focusing on that and start taking inventory? And like any other community, they should really be taking inventory of their, their assets. And it's, it's an a, part of my job is asset management, right? So like we started looking simultaneously because it's such an old community and not much public investment was really made in your streets, your sidewalks, your underground infrastructure, such as your sewer, water, and storm water. So we started looking at these assets, starting and applying different metrics to them to determine, do these need to be replaced? And we started creating public projects based on that and making major public investments in our community. Because one of the things we do believe here in Nagani, like many other communities, is that uh, private investment will be followed by public investment. So if the community or outsiders or developers are not led to believe that even the government doesn't care about this place and we're not going to fix our water, we're not going to fix our sewer, or whatever it may be, uh, then, then why should I fix my building up? Why should I keep my house looking nice? Why should I develop or move a business into that community if they don't even care themselves? So that's another philosophy we have here in our community of Nagani is uh, to make sure you make your community look like it's loved. And we're doing that by not only the RRC, but other things that have come forward through that process to some degree. The investment in public infrastructure, we also passed several ordinances that dealt with property maintenance codes to make sure people clean up their properties or keep them in working good working order. And then additionally, looking at rental units, protecting renters from slumlords in our community. So all those things combined together have been part of our recipe of success here in Nagani. Very cool. Last question, if if a community is watching this or listening to this and they've been thinking about becoming an, a redevelopment ready community, but they but they haven't really committed yet, what what would you say to them? Well, I'd say that you're you're on the right step. You're thinking about it. But you really need to sit down with whoever your local representative is from the RRC or so, sorry, from MEDC and learn a little bit more about it. It's, a, it's not a quick process. Ask all the questions you can, but it's definitely worth doing. Also reach out to other communities that have went through the process. Find out how they did it, what it took, and then what benefits they're receiving from it. One of the things that MEDC is not promising through this whole process is you do this and then you're fixed. Like I said, again, once you become certified, you, you have to work hard in two different directions. One is to maintain that certification so you're up to date and still become certified. And two, working with our, working through the RRC with the MEDC uh, to find ways to get developers to come to your community. And that's the next step of the services they provide that you can get other technical assistance to help you in that way. So for instance, Nagani has already taken advantage of some of those services. And we have one developer that is looking at an old building that is vacant and is not occupiable, and it's gonna to be torn down. And then MEDC helped us get a funding mechanism in place to have some engineering done on a building that that person's gonna build. So now 
a building that was worth nothing, bringing in maybe a couple hundred dollars to a thousand dollars in tax revenue right now, is going to yield a four million dollar apartment complex with one commercial space below it for mixed use. So that's going to exponentially provide more tax revenue, more workers, more people living in the community, and potentially a brand new business in that commercial space. Amazing. Amazing. Well, I'm, I'm, I want to first thank you so much, Nate, for, for taking the time today, telling us your story, story of the community. I want to thank the community of Nogani. It sounds like you, you guys are, are making big moves and you're making change and, and you obviously have a lot of pride in, in, in your community and, and <laughs> what do. you guys are, are trying to accomplish. So thank you so much, sir. And cheering you on from, from Bay City over here. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time.